Photoshop has a brand new feature in beta right now called Generative Fill, which will allow you to extend the backgrounds or create other things inside of the elements you are creating in your image. Right now, it is in beta. Not everybody has access to this yet, and it cannot be used for commercial use while in beta. We are going to go over some of the terms of service in an upcoming episode, so follow along for that so you can know how to use it and how to access this if you want to try this out. But this is how you can be using the tool and different ways you can be using it inside of your creation as you're figuring out how this can be implemented into your business or your art creation. So inside of the beta version of Photoshop, you cannot find this in normal Photoshop. This has to be inside of the beta. You are going to be able to drag in your image, whatever image you want to be using. Then you have to select part of your background. You can either extend your background or you can just select it. I am going to go ahead and grab my crop tool and I am just going to pull this out. So I'm taking a vertical photo and I'm making it more of a horizontal image. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to allow that to remain how it is. Anywhere I want to change, I am now going to grab my square tool and I am just going to highlight that area. If I want to do more than one area, I hold the shift button down and I can select a secondary location on this as well. Now the toolbar down on the bottom will say generative fill. There are a couple of different ways that we can do this. We're going to take a look at how you can be doing this in different ways. Now, if you do not type anything here, it will analyze your image and it will then extend the image to wherever the selection is going to be. I am just going to go ahead and click on generate and it is going to process. This usually takes a few seconds. It's not very slow at all. It is very quick to get through this. It's going to give you several options that you can then look through. So as you are doing this, you're going to have several options you can click through. And then if you are a skilled Photoshop person, you will be able to go in and tweak anything that you don't like. So you can see there's some weird random things. If you look up at the top, there's like a weird random wire here. There's kind of some weird trees going on here. So if this were the image I was going to keep, I would have to do a little bit of Photoshopping. You can even see there's some great things going down at the bottom corner of this or the bottom center. It does not function the way that I want that I would have to retouch. Now, if I don't like this variation, I'm going to look to the right side of my screen where you can see variations. And it usually gives you three options, but I have seen over six options on some of these that we'll take a look at. And so I'm going to then tweak to the next one or move over to the next one. You can kind of see the difference between those, how it created more of that. You can see how it even changed that blue car from one way to another. And then I'm going to continue and, oh, wow, that one's not so great. So I would pick the best of these and I would then go from there. If I do not like that, I am then going to be able to try something a little bit differently. Now, if you look at the toolbar, you will see that this is going to have the layer on top of it. So the generative layer is on top and it does not actually touch my original image. You could turn that on and off and just overlays it on top of that. So let's say I didn't like this. Let's go ahead and let's remove that so that I can work on a different layer here. I'm going to remove that. I'm going to grab my lasso tool again, and I am going to just go right over the section that I want changed. Now I'm going to click on generative fill, and this time I am going to type in words. The more clear you are on the words, the more you are going to get implemented into this. So let's try street with cars and trees. And from there, oops, street with cars and trees. And let's just see what comes up. We're going to click generate and we're going to wait for it to process through again. And we're going to see if it's going to be different or if it's going to be the same based on those keywords that I have now put in. I can change this entirely and I can actually grab sections of the image that's there, not just the white that I extended. And you can see how now it's given me different options. It is giving me different options that I can work with. So there's a car close up. This is the types of cars here, lots of different types of cars here. And you can see how some of the Photoshopping is kind of weird. We would have to fix that. But you can see how that would work really well for me. Let me show you a couple of the other things that I have done. I did an airport selfie. This is just a screenshot I took on my phone of a video and I extended it to look like the rest of the airport. I can see that vertical image and make it horizontal. I did a pumpkin patch. This is where it gave me a lot of different options. So this is my original photo here. And in the original photo that I did, I just let it naturally extend it. Then I typed in a pumpkin patch or piles of pumpkin, and I got all of these different options. You can kind of see how it's extended what I have created here. So there's a lot of different options that you can be doing. I even extended this one, which I really like. So this is my original image. Again, a screenshot of a video I did, and it 
has given me these different options for the tree line, the mountains, the sky. You can see how easy that is. This one is my favorite. This is the one that I would go with. There's actually not that much retouching to do on this. There's a lot of different options. And the more you give it inside of the prompt, the more it's going to be able to add things in. So when I did that pumpkin patch one, I actually typed in pumpkin patch with corn stalks and it gave me a lot of like corn stalks in the foreground. There's a lot of options that you can do with this. This again is inside of the beta version of Photoshop. If you want to learn how to get access to this, if you want to learn the terms and services of this, we're actually going to take a look at those in upcoming episodes so that you are using this properly. Because again, this cannot be used for commercial use. You cannot use this for your business yet. You can't use this for book covers or artwork or any of those things. This is just for fun and so that they can train their AI on what works and what doesn't work. So let's look at that toolbar one more time. The toolbar will allow you to add a prompt. You can click through the prompts. You can generate it. You can say, yes, this worked well for me. No, this didn't work well for me. Or you can report that problem. It also has the ability to hide the bar, reset the bar position, or pin the bar position so that you could see, you know, as I move this, it jumped from the top to the bottom. You can see how that kind of works. And you're going to be able to then, on the variations of each of those images, click on the three little dots and you can say delete, good result, poor result, or report result that something didn't go well. This is going to train the AI. So when it comes out in the main Photoshop, you have the ability to use it right now inside of what you're doing, the way that you are trying to grow and expand your content creation to make this even easier for you. This is going to be really great for photographers who took a vertical photo who need to extend it horizontal or who didn't want to crop it in quite the way that they did with our horizontal video to make it vertical, you can actually enhance some of these things. You can change the skylines, the backgrounds, all these things. And all of this we know is drawing from Adobe stock imagery. So right now it's being trained on what works and what doesn't work, but they're pulling from Adobe stock. They've already said that the people are going to be compensated who are part of Adobe stock. So this is all on the up and up. It is not pulling general information from the internet. It is not going to be stealing from anybody. They are doing this in a way that's protecting artists and creators. We have other videos about that. And we're going to continue to have this conversation. And we talk about the terms and services of the beta version right now, how you can gain access to this and more things that you can be doing with generative AI so that you can learn how to use it right now. So when it comes out to the public, you can immediately leverage it in your business to save you a ton of time and effort no matter what you are creating. Follow along, we're gonna break down more tutorials on how you can be thriving with AI inside of the Adobe space. There's lots of things we can be beta testing right now and we're gonna show you a whole bunch of them here on the channel. Drop your questions, drop your comments, and we are going to continue with daily videos to help you navigate the world of social media, building your online business, content creation, time-saving hacks, and making more money from your online endeavors with less time and less stress involved in it. We'll see you in the next episode.